Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And welcome to episode 86. <laughs> and we got a lot to talk about. Uh, I have a really great question about mental conditioning. And we're going to talk about uh, lessons from Kobe. CP3 is teaching us something as well that they just won't love it as much as we will. Um, man, it's all good. Um, and negotiating your salary. Let's talk about it. Moose, how are we feeling? Yeah, this is like a, maybe a snippet or a little taste of what a Tuesday would typically feel like. And by Tuesday, I mean the Tuesday live show, because this is all about how to make yourself better. So that, of course, you can accelerate the growth of your business and your brand. So this should be special. Let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. Shout out to all our audio and video viewers around the world. We appreciate you. We love you. We do this for y'all. You know what I mean? Um, Moose, how are we feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's been a, it's been a good week. It's officially spring in uh, New York, New Jersey area. Hey. So energy is right. And uh, I'm excited, man. Edging closer to 100 uh, every, every week. So uh, only 14... T minus 14 till we hit that big century mark on 100 episodes. So, you know, the hey. vibes. And look, uh, we, we got some special, first and foremost, the big announcement. This is powered by Ecamm Live. All right. The, the hats, out, the, the cat, what is it? The cat's out of, whatever. You already know what I'm saying. This is big news. I already messed that all the way up but it's all good um we are officially uh sponsored by ecamm live this whole podcast is produced by this software that not only allows us to produce a high quality podcast but it allows us to have the files to edit it allows us to create um high quality clips it's just it's amazing. So if anybody, especially for people who are considering getting into podcasting and trying to figure out how do I have a, a video and audio uh, podcast nowadays, we're going to say Ecamm all day, every day. Shout out to Ecamm. You know, a little small announcement. You feel me? 100%. 100%. But um, I'm doing amazing because I've been... First off, I had the best uh, therapy session ever. Shout out to everybody who, who goes to therapy. But it, it sparked the question that I have for this podcast today, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I've been asking uh, a good amount of people this, this question lately, and we, we kind of know some of them, uh, just to name a few, uh, Jamal King, Eric Thomas, Inky Johnson, Alex, uh, good energy. But, you know, this is just so, some of a few, right? But the question that I have for everybody is we all know that LeBron James spends millions of dollars pretty much conditioning his body, making sure it's top tier shape in order to be an elite athlete what we know as one of the goats, right? Now, my question is for creators and entrepreneurs, what does that investment look like for us from a more mental and brain health kind of vibe? Because clearly some of us don't necessarily need to condition our bodies per se to make some of the decisions we do or continue to work in our craft, but we 
constantly have to work on our mind. So my question was, what is our LeBron James formula as top tier creators and high level uh, performing entrepreneurs? Before I get to uh, kind of our quote unquote special guests about that, I would love to know uh, what Moose thinks about. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's 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 such a. It's so cool how you kind of came up with that concept, right? I think a lot of people were also giving you credits to like, yo, how did you come up with that question? Because it, it, it brought up a lot of people or it put people in a position to start really thinking about how do you accelerate the health of not just your mental and physical being, but your brain, because that is a part of your body that is responsible for a lot of what you experience or what you create or the, the decisions that you make. And... Quite honestly, I don't think I've ever spent time thinking about that before you asked it. You know, like I, mm. I have my uh, kind of personal routines, my spiritual routines that I do on a pretty regular basis. I, I, I tend to be pretty consistent with that, but nothing specific for my brain. So the question has me in a position now that is trying to look for ways to do for my brain as I do for everything else, like my physical, my mental, my spiritual. I don't know that I do anything for my brain. So I gotta, I gotta get up to speed with that. Listen, it's gonna make, it's gonna make a lot of people think, but um, of course with permission, uh, like I said, I, I asked a lot of people um, and I do have this all in the folder, but then I'm gonna be selfish with it for a little bit until I mm -hmm. figure this out, right? Uh, Cause this, this this question was really sparked by me trying to figure out what's my next level, right? And, um, and what I'm realizing is that I, I do work best when my mind is clear and like at highest level. But how mm -hmm. do I maintain that or how do I trigger a new level for my brain? So like, this is where that really came from. But uh, I had to ask uh, the one and only Inky Johnson uh, this question. And you already know he's going to come with a profound answer. So let's let's play that real quick. Beast, what's going on? Great, great question. And I hope I can do it justice. And I know everybody has a different perspective on it. Um, but it's very intriguing. You know, when you talk about high level individuals and what they do in terms of the sacrifices to operate at the optimal level right and so i think one of the things in our space you know as creators as entrepreneurs even for me just as a you know speaker and entrepreneur just the preparation piece right like when i started preparing differently it changed not only my business it changed my life drastically right when i went from just showing up to speak at a gig to really getting information, really doing conference calls, really searching, like, what is it about this company? What is it that's important to this company? It's the same version of LeBron saying, hey man, what can I do in terms of my health for longevity? What can I do so I can sustain? What can I do so my body can recover faster? It's the same with me going into a room and figuring out, all right, what is it that's important to Chick-fil-A? All right, what is it that's important to Uber? What is it that's important to Penske? Right. But also understanding how environment affects that. Also understanding how people that we talk to on a daily basis affects that. Also understanding how the information that we consume affects that. Right. And when I say affect that, what that is, is us operating at the optimal level and really being able to show up every single day and put forth our best selves. Now, that doesn't mean every single day we'll be at our best, but just putting forth our best selves on that particular or specific day. But it's very intriguing, I think, when you speak to research and preparation, I think that's a piece that can help us sustain, but also have longevity in terms of our careers and what we do, but also when it comes to working out, right? Taking care of our bodies, right? Because for me, I'm gonna be real, I work out a lot, but I work out more so for my mental health than my physical, right? I work out so my mind state can be right. Like it's not a speaking engagement that I've ever done that I haven't worked out prior to, you know, speaking, right? I always work out whether it's right before or the day of 
before I speak. And so it's different little things that works for different people. But I think, you know, when you talk preparation, when you talk research, when you talk about the people that we hang around, when you talk about the things that we speak, but also the information that we consume, because all of it plays an important and vital role to us operating at the optimal level. Like LeBron goes and said, man, let me get a dietitian, right? Let me make sure my body is getting the proper amount of rest so I can recover. Let me make sure I got the proper trainers, right? And so looking at our careers and figuring out what some of those things that can help us operate at that level. And so for me, preparation, the people I speak to, the information I consume, uh, making sure I'm working out so my mind state can be in a healthy place, but also the information that I'm consuming, making sure that it puts me in a great space and just understanding what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to accomplish when I walk into a room, you know, not only for my business and my career, but just as a man, holistically. Hope this helps. I know it was a little bit long, but just wanted to do it just. Thanks, peace. I love it. I love it. You, 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 I love when uh, when deep people really get an opportunity to just, uh, you know, share their point of view. But well said, man. Well said. I, I definitely think that's a part of it, right? Because mm-hmm. like, even if, uh, and I'm focused more on the brain power of it, because I feel like that part of the question is probably the area that I'm least, uh, say, uh, maybe I dedicate the least amount of time to from, from a health standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, sure, you can say like, hey, working out, I, I get some benefits from working out for the my brain health, or from eating healthy, I get some benefits for that, or for my, sure, they're all interconnected, but I know for a fact there are things that you can specifically do for that, Mm -hmm. but when you hear something like, even what Inky's saying here, right, talking about preparation, there is a level of, uh, say, relief that your brain is going to experience when it knows that what you're about to do, you're already prepared for. Right. You don't, you don't got to stress for it. You, there's no, there's no anxiety. You, you've put yourself through the training to perform, uh, or you've put it under the condition that it needs to be in so that it can perform when the lights are on. So I, I do like that. And it's also cool to see how simple the answer is. It, it, it's not super off the wall for him. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of, Hey, I just, my preparation went to another level yeah. and that can mean, you know, that can mean something specific for, Every single person who's listening here, something that you might have overlooked or underplayed or downplayed and said, hey, it's not that important, but you can include it to your preparation and possibly receive or see much greater results. And more importantly, uh, uh, brain health. I'm going to keep using that brain health uh, uh, to to help you grow in those areas that we're talking about. Yeah, there's so much. and, And I went further clearly with the conversation with Inky, but there, there's so much that he said that I think we just don't put enough emphasis on. Like when he was talking about, you know, the conversations that I'm having, right? That's all part of it. Of course, when you can think about working out, um, you know, when you feel better, you know, physically, you know, mentally, that also plays a part as well. But um, the the who you talk to and what you're consuming with an open mind. What I love about Inky, it doesn't matter who it is. He grabs a lesson from every single person. He he has a conversation, super open minded, and like. Because it's just a different perspective that maybe he didn't understand or maybe yeah. he never heard before. And and I relate it all back to experiences, right? He's opening himself to different perspectives and different experiences that he d- doesn't have on a regular or is just very intentional having. And I'm like, and, and we had more conversations like, also, it, it breaks down into community as well of, of something that has to be part of this like new brain health kind of roadmap that I'm calling it because there's there's so many different things you can do to strengthen your your mind. Right. Just like how LeBron 
uses different technology and, and different um, exercises. And like, there's always different things. There's not just one thing he's spending all this money on. Right. Right. Um, right, right. And so you, you, what I'm, what I'm hearing is, okay, not only experiences, not only conversations, of course, um, you know, the higher education and just mastering your craft. What are you doing intentionally that you are getting better and sharpening your tools in your mind every single day? I, I loved, uh, which we didn't play was, uh, what Willie Mo said about how, how he reads his books. So mm. he reads three books a month, one audible and two physical, right? Two hardcover. And I'm like, there a reason? Like that's first off the Very odd specific. number. Right, right. right. And, and you're dividing it instead of saying all audible or all, you know, hardcover. And he's like, look, I'm on the road, you know? And so I'm, I don't want to listen to, to music. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I always want to consume uh, information. So when, when I'm driving, when I'm driving the kids, I'm listening to audiobooks, right? So I'm listening to one and then the hardcover because, you know, th the focus is when you are reading the book physically. You could get distracted doing audible. You could do multiple things and still receive the information, but you are focused on reading that book. And I'm That's like, true. that, okay, that makes sense because mm -hmm. I, I don't like reading. I don't like reading. <laughs> I have short attention span, but it makes sense because if you're trying to strengthen your your mind and your brain, you have to concentrate on that focus, like to what you're doing, because right. now you're allowing. Oh, well, I, I just don't. You're finding an excuse. Oh, well, I have a short attention span. I'm just going to listen to the audible. So if there was a, a, a situation to come about, you will find an excuse to not focus on find the easier way to do it. Mm -hmm. Like having these different conversations is just making me like aware of just the little things that we do. Like yeah. that we're like, oh, snap. So like um, in, in my therapy session, we, we spoke about the word intriguing, right? I, I told her that... Um, like I have something like right there and I can see it super intriguing. Right. But it just won't come through. And she's like, keywords are intriguing. And I'm like, what, what you mean? You, and I said something else that was like intriguing and discovery, like intriguing just makes you look from afar. Oh, it's intriguing. It's like window shopping. Right. And discovering you're constantly trying to find the answer. You're trying to go towards it, right? But intriguing is just like, oh, that's cool. I'm intrigued. And then and it stays right there, right? Mm -hmm. Like you may want to focus more on the discovery than necessarily the intriguing. And I was like, get off my phone. I am done. I got it. I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. Because all I need is like one thing that truly makes sense and we're good. And so, you know, that right now I'm, I'm, I'm truly on this path of understanding different ways to level up from a mental standpoint. I think for me, and, and Musa, I'd love to hear just like some of the things you do, like for me, um, like Prayer life is good. Meditation is on 5,000 right now, right? Um, the, the mastering my craft is amazing. Um, now I, but now I feel like I need to read physical books, but that's cool. Whatever. Mm -hmm. We'll make that shift, right? Um, and so work, working out, I'm getting more on a consistent schedule with that. I'm still chubby, I'm the, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> I don't do it to look good. I do it for my mental now. Look at this. <laughs> Boom. Right. Um, but I'm still, I'm always seeking 
for more. And I'm always seeking for that, my formula, not everybody else's formula, but my yeah. formula of what LeBron does, but from a more mental situation. Cause I think that's what doesn't necessarily get talked about too much. Cause th- when I, when I asked each of these individuals, I also did say, don't say therapy because th- that we know. And don't say higher education because that we know, right? right. Those are the two like most expensive things, right? Mm-hmm. Now, of, of course, some still said, okay, masterminds, right? Um, shout out to Anthony Flynn. He was like, yo, community is so important because there's not many people who do what we do. So you're going to want to be around it because the people who you have conversations with is not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got it. I understand now. I understand. But real quick for the people, Moose, what is, even though you said I don't intentionally do things for brain health, right? But there is still things you do to stay sane, which is still a bit of brain health. Yeah, I mean, I think the... Well, I'm saying mental conditioning, not brain health for me. I'm saying mental conditioning. Okay, I like that. It has a little, like, uh, workout vibe to it. See? Because I got to compare it to LeBron, so I'm like, mental conditioning. Mental conditioning. No, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I think for my sanity, you know, and I'm blessed, man. I think it just my spirituality, it, it puts me in a place where I have to strip everything at least once a year for an entire month, right? Like right. that month of Ramadan, which I'm fresh off of. And I know we joked a little bit about like, oh man, every time Ramadan finishes, there's I'm something- I'm excited that, about next year. You know, I promise yeah, that, you. That comes from it. I'm excited. Yeah. I almost want to do it with you so I can guarantee that Come you on. do something better. Like, <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's always fun, man. I, the last few years I've been I've been able to bring a few people with me on that journey, which is incredible. But I think like when I when I really get down to the DNA of what's happening for me during the month of Ramadan is that I'm removing myself and I'm almost cutting ties with all thing that all things that our flesh gets attached to. Mm. So there's a there's a lot of things that because market marketers are so brilliant and 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 just our flesh it like it's designed for that like we get attracted to a lot of external things that we place value or more importantly that somebody else put value on mm-hmm. they're not truly valuable but someone convinced that that he, convinced us that hey these external things they're going to make you feel valuable right and and so you start chasing and pursuing them and sacrificing things that are probably more important to have those things. And the worst case is, or the worst thing is, when you finally get them, you still feel a void. Mm. Because you, you, you created this almost fantasy world that when I get there, when I get this thing, or when I get this approval or this opportunity or whatever it may be, I'm going to feel this heroic sensation of me conquering my greatest enemy or my greatest victory. And you feel nothing. So it, it's the mind just goes into this confused shock mode. Like, wait, what, what just happened? I I thought I was supposed to celebrate and feel good. So Ramadan has a way of reminding me of that because again, it just, it strips everything away, everything, Mm -hmm. food, water, uh, bad thoughts, no cursing, no music, uh, no gum, no medicine, everything, everything, no gum. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Uh, yeah, you got to break that just, down on the live. Like well, all the things you can't. Ha- I didn't know no gum. Like that yeah, isn't. Yeah. I don't chew gum no more. I'm right. More of a Tic Tacs person. But uh, no gum. Wow, that's okay. That's No gum. Yeah. Nothing. So it puts you like the process of what happens. And there's like a whole scientific study that's come about from the, the benefits of fasting. Mm -hmm. more recently to say, wow, fasting is so good for the body because of what it does to the digestive system and all that. In the beginning, just like any traditional, uh, I'm I'm using the word lightly, addict or someone who's addicted to something, you're going through it, right? Your body's like, what the heck is going on? Right. And then 
shortly after when you just get over the initial shock, your mind goes elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And the key here for me is I realized that because food and water is not an option, I don't sit there and dwell about, oh man, I can't eat. Oh man, I wish I could eat. It's like, no, you, you know you're going to eat at sundown, 7.30, right. 8 o'clock, depending on when you break fast. So it's no longer an option. And you can focus on other higher value things. So yeah, I, I got to put, the, the, the biggest blessing for me, I got to say, comes from, from fasting because it, it really connects me back to why we were created, what matters most in life, and it, it helps me to practice the discipline to stay true to those things. Everything else comes secondary, and I'm realizing when I do that, a lot of the worldly things that I want come to me a lot easier. Mm. So good. So people in our, in our comments, uh, wherever platform you want to comment to us, uh, what is something that you do that maybe doesn't get discussed a lot um, that you feel creators and entrepreneurs should invest more from a time situation or a money situation. So love to hear that from you, but let me speak on where this even came from. Mm -hmm. And it came from an amazing interview uh, that I am athlete, uh, shout out to I am athlete, uh, did with Kyrie uh, Irving. Now, it wasn't the, it wasn't even the topic, right? That the LeBron thing, as far as what he does, wasn't even the topic, but he mentioned it and it triggered, right? But there was also part of this interview that he talks about Kobe, right? And he talks about the lessons that Kobe Bryant left for him. And it's so jam-packed that we had to bring it onto the podcast. So uh, let's play this clip. I am he really sparks that, that curiosity even more so because he studied all the greats in other industries in order to help him focus in on what he was doing. He said, man, just you, you can look at the game and you can study the greats, but really get a, a world view of all those that are doing great things alongside you. You're not the only one that's dealing with these things. I've studied basketball more than, you know, 10,000 hours, as they say, before you become an expert or a master yeah. of your craft. When I got to Boston, I was ready for a new challenge, but I didn't know how it was gonna come from within. And that's why he gave me the alchemist. It's like the journey is the reward. Embrace the journey. Don't think about the end goal so much where you're fixated on trying to prove people wrong or you know, be at the mountaintop without going through the details that it takes to really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 the season that uh, I feel like I'm in all of these seasons simultaneously Let's go. right Let's now. Let's go. <laughs> it's a it's a good it's a good time to be alive. But no, nah, man, I, I think that's some I'm 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 stuck on that part. The journey is the reward. Like you mm -hmm. you, you go back to what I just said a, a couple minutes ago about the this void that we feel when we're pursuing these worldly things and we actually do get them and we're like oh, man, I'm, I'm empty. You know, like I remember my first ever like big financial goal that I set for myself was to have $25,000 in my savings account. And at the time that was like, yo, if I could get 25 grand, like I'll be rich forever. Like I, I, I felt like I was going, I was just going to be a gazillionaire off of 25 in my savings. Yeah. And then I, like I got my final contract to reach that mark and I saw the money there and I was like, almost like looking around, like something, someone robbed me. I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, this don't feel right. Like right. I, I should be, and I was expecting to be this like big emotion, I don't know, something. And I felt nothing at all. And that, learning that now and just kind of listening to this, like as much as the, like, the end result is great and it's important, you gotta follow through, you gotta finish, you gotta do these things. More important is who you become in the process, though. Mm. That, that's the part, that's like the pruning part or the development part that helps you and shapes you and molds you to become someone who can do these things over and over. And you almost know you're going to win, but you enjoy the competition. So it's that's like, ah, I, I still want to play because it's fun, but I know I'm going to win. I'm not stressing about that part. 
And at the end of the day, even if I lose, you win some and you lose some. You know, mm -hmm. like it, 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 it just puts in perspective the things that matter most. So I, I really appreciate that the, the journey and, and the emphasis on the process itself over the outcome. Not to say that the outcome isn't important, but putting more effort and attention there does give you more fulfillment than, than this imagination that we tend to almost dream about uh, of what the final product is going to be. And it never satisfies what you think it's going to, it's going to help you like to experience. Yeah. And the, and the thing that I got out of this was like two folds, like one, uh, learning from the greats outside of your industry. Like, we focus a lot on looking at thought leaders in our industry because they have the blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. But there are so many different perspectives of success and how he brought it up was like, yo, you're not the only one going through this. Like you may feel that way and you may only be looking at your industry of some of the the struggles that you're going through, the ups and downs of it. But have you looked at all these other successful people because they probably had something similar as well that you may not just be seeing because you're so focused on understanding what your lane is, which is nothing wrong, mm -hmm. but it's all about opening your mind to the full definition of success and the full scope of it instead of just what is success in your lane. So that yeah. was one of the things that I was like, bingo, outside of the box, who else is success successful and what has been their journey? Yeah. And looking at that to see if there's any similarities within what they did and what's happening in the industry to almost have a one-up in the industry, yeah. right? So he looked at that, grabbed whatever he needed to do after that, um, after that lesson from Kobe and probably took it to a whole new level, you know? So that was one of the things. And then of course, you know, just seeking a, a deeper meaning, even though when you have it all and when people think the world of you and you're going into a great opportunity, there still is, you know, trusting the process like and, and you know we we like me and moose hear that a lot like if you're in the professional development situation you hear trust the process almost 24 mm -hmm. 7 right mm -hmm. but until you really grasp it and you really apply it you really won't understand the importance of it. You just will hear it over and over. When I, when, like a few years ago, I used to hear it over, yeah, okay, trust the process. I get it. There's a process, a journey. Ah, 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 that's great, right? Um, but then even now, even with the, the, the conversation we had earlier, understanding that e the, every bit of what you do is part of this process and it has to be recognized and it has to be um, elevated as well. Mm -hmm. If not, you're going to feel empty. You're going to feel stuck. You're going to feel like it's like right there, but you haven't, uh, you haven't unlocked it yet. And it's all because, you know, releasing or, or knocking down the walls of what you knew and being open to what is there for you while like in in before paying attention to what success really is and what is the light at the end of the tunnel for what you're trying to do so that like if y'all didn't watch that that interview at all like that thing opened my yeah. mind crazy like yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you notice like a big part of it is him talking about going back to figure out answers to, to those big questions, right? Like mm -hmm. why, you know, 
who am I and, and figuring out. And, and that's why I say like getting some answers to that, it's critical, man. You, you, you start to figure out what is the true definition and meaning of life and not what you were marketed mm -hmm. as the definition of success and happiness and joy and wealth and health. And, you know, like some, some image of, for people of health is, you know, if you're a guy, it's like this, this ripped shredded guy with a six pack and all that. Right. Quite honestly, that's not always the healthiest thing. You know, like, like they still there's, I, I'm like, saying, I'm saying. You can still I'm get saying. hit by a car. I'm just saying. Yeah. You can still get hit by a car. Blood vessel could pop somehow, somewhere. Like you can still die. I just. Yeah. And no, 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 I'm not even talking about that. I'm just saying like the, like when you talk about like functional health for your body, sometimes being that lean isn't always healthy. Like even bodybuilders, they're only lean for just a couple of days when they're right. like nearing their show day. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I'm not saying they're out of shape, but you know, they're not walking around at what we see of, as an image in our head. So sometimes like these ideas of what's been marketed to us as success and all these different things, we really got to go back and redefine that and figure out like, what is the non-marketed definition of these things for me, for you as an individual, what does it mean for you? Because going back and listening him to him talk on that interview is like, you know, I, he went and spent time here and went here and started to figure out what this meant and that's how he came up with his answer. Mm -hmm. And although misunderstood by many people in the industry or in the league, you know, for him, he now feels like he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, which at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. So yeah, I, I think that part was, was really dope to listen to and almost confirms this idea of, you know, you, you gotta have your own unmarketed definition of what these things mean to you. Big facts. So staying in the realm of uh, basketball players, right? Um, there was an interview with uh, CP3, Chris Paul, for those people who don't know who it who he is. He plays uh, for the Suns. Uh, amazing individual. And uh, the, the topic of team always comes up for us, right? Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. watching this interview and it just hit my soul that I wanted to talk about it, right? I'm just going to let you hear in so you can understand why this hit my soul. I remember one of my coaches in Houston said to me, he said, one of the things you're gonna have to work on is being able to deal with somebody that doesn't care as much as you care. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing, because this game right here, like, I watch everything. I watch every game. I study the game. Like I love it that much. Sheesh. First, uh, I needed my man to react. He should have reacted, mm -hmm. okay? Because Yeah, we needed to. We yeah. Needed a, ooh, we then needed he was like, ooh, he, yikes. Right, so this is such a true statement that hurts my soul, right? That hurts my soul. And we talked a little bit about it on, you know, our Tuesday lives. If you don't watch that, uh, please do. I'm just saying. Um, it's on YouTube, 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. Now, I, I said on the live, like, yo, you, you don't want these team problems. Like you don't, you, you scream, you want a team. I need a team. I need a team and team. Right. You don't want these problems because your business, your brand is your baby. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody ever, ever going to care as much as you. Now, let's say you don't have a, brand or business, let's say you work a nine to five, but you are an elite person, top of the class at what you do. There's still not going to be people that are going to care and work the same way. And you have to be okay with that. Like, yo, what do you mean? Yo, how, how is this still here? Like we, we got to finish this. No, nah, it's like four o'clock. What you talking about? We are out. Mm. Wait, what? 
Nah, it's not done. Yo, we could do this tomorrow. What? Like, what you mean? Yo, we, we got to come up with this together. Ah, I'm with so-and-so. I'm doing this. And like, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. But mm. you have to come to terms with that. It's, mm. And it's probably going to take a minute. Because you're like, yo, especially um, if, if you bring family and friends into business. If you bring family and friends to business, you almost expect them to care as much as you do because they care about you. Right. No, they care about you. They don't care about the business side of you, the branding side of you, the task part of you. They don't necessarily care about that. They care about you. Right. And when you come to terms with that, it, it makes it a little bit easier. You, you maneuver a little bit differently and you strategize how to get the goal done. Because now it's not putting all the expectations on them. It's now laying out the ground rules. Okay, this is what needs to be done. This is who needs to be a part of it. Laying it all the way out so the the result is accomplishment. Right? And when you expect people to move like you and work like you, you tend to skip out on the details of what it is to accomplish the goal. Mm. Because you think that it's kind of like mind reading. You know what we're here for. You know how to do this. No. no. As the leader, you still have to map it out for them. And I, that was a mistake that I did was like, now we're doing this together. You know exactly what is needed. So where is this at? Like, where is it written out? Where, when did you tell me? When? Mm -hmm. To the point where it's like, yo, I don't even feel like being this petty. Like, I don't feel like I should have these receipts. Right? But instead of getting frustrated, you just make it clear as day. And if you make it clear as day, it's not even about if they... Uh, care or love the situation as much as you is just, do they have the ability to do it? Mm -hmm. And that's really yeah. what it has to be. Do they have the ability to do it? Not do they love it as much as you and do they care and do they, they dream about it? that's not, do yeah. they have the ability to do it? Yeah. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. Mm -hmm. And I think if you've been in business for any, for any amount of time, you'll start to realize that, your people caring about something, loving something as much as you do, that's a, that's a bonus. The question that you really need to ask yourself, and I like to take it from this approach, whether you're a leader and you're responsible for people on your team, whether you got staff and these are your coworkers, however you look at it is, are these bad employees or am I not a good enough leader? Mm. That's that's how you got to look at it. It's not about caring mm. and 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 not caring. It's am I getting the most out of their time here by mm. putting a lot of these emotions and and preferences and things that would be super ideal. Look, it's very convenient. Man, is it man, man does it feel good? To work with someone who's as dedicated, who believes the same that you believe, who's into the same things, who agrees with everything, it feels really good. But it's not always the best thing. So right. I, 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 I've, I've just accepted that because when you're working with people, it's just so difficult to get a lot of these likes to line up and be in perfect alignment. So you got to work with what you have. But when you look at it through that lens of, are my employees and my team members bad? Or am I just not a good enough leader? Mm. It, puts, it points the finger in the right direction. It points the finger in the right direction. And ultimately, that's back at you to figure out, how can I become better? Right. Which is the person that I have the most control over. You might have some control over your staff because you pay them, because whatever the case may be. But you have more control over yourself. And at the end of the day, 
if it's really not working out, you still have the option or you can make the decision to let them go, mm -hmm. which while I know some people don't believe in this philosophy, cutting ties is sometimes the best thing that you can do, not just for your business, but for that other person's future and their career, because they can't make the decision for themselves and you're suffocating them in the wrong position or the wrong environment. So sometimes it's like, you know what, let me help you out by, I know this sounds terrible, but by firing you or dismissing you from this mm. role because you're not going to leave yourself and it's not doing any of us any good. So again, if you really had to walk it out, that's a decision that you get to make as a leader or as someone, you know, who's, who's in a, a position of influence. So that, that's how I've looked at it. You know, I have business partners who complain about staff all the time and I'm, and now I'm just taking a strong stance. Are you providing the right tools? Do you understand why? Do, are you a good enough leader or are they just bad employees? Mm. And then, and then the turnaround, you'll be pretty surprised as to how the turnaround comes back. Like, actually, okay. I guess it's not as bad as I thought. You know, it's, uh, it's like, no, oh, there you go. Facts. Good. Um, and so going along with this as well, we, we watched a great, once again, uh, earn your leisure. We need our sticker. Uh, great badge interview. Right there. Yay. Right. We, we wear it with honor. Cause as much as we go over you, um, but, um, earn your leisure interviewed, um, Angela Yee from the uh, breakfast club. Right. And it was, a, first off, another great interview, but her journey from taking a low amount of money to get the opportunity for the Breakfast Club. And now we see it, what, 12, 13 years later. Uh, we know that bag is different, but uh, how did she get that bag? That's, that's the question that we have, and uh, we have a clip. I did approach them after the first year for a raise, though. And sometimes it's hard when you start off really low to try to get your... Because, you know, I had read an article about Black women not negotiating their salaries, and women in general, the way that we should. Mm -hmm. And sometimes somebody offers you something and you just take it. And sometimes you have to ask. Like, we think that, okay, they're just going to hand you a salary because you're doing great. You could walk around really bitter thinking, how come I'm not making more money, but you never asked to make more money? Because usually your employer is not going to be like, you know what? I just want to give you a raise. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 uh, that's real. And again, another one of those, uh, it would, y when you're in that position, you justify why you feel like it, it should be them who come to me telling me, "Hey, you're so awesome. Let me pay you millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars yes. because we appreciate you so much." Oh, but you are amazing. This is <laughs> you are just so this, incredible. This is it's such a blessing to have you. It's yeah, just, I mean, wow. Where were we? Where were we before you? Where, yeah, I can't. I just don't understand how it even works. Like, how this is can just life be without? Like, you're irreplaceable. This big time. What? Yeah, I don't even know where it would be without you. You know, it's just it's unbelievable. I don't. <laughs> so I it's don't. like. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yo, a lot of these things, man, nice to have, nice to have. Boy, yes. would it be great. Would, this world would be a much better place if every person in a position of power or leadership uh, was that way with their staff or the people who worked with them. But when you start thinking reality and you hear someone in her position tell you, like, the reality is a business owner or someone in that position that's not something, even if they wanted to do, it's not a move that is in their best interest. Yes. It's just not a move that's in their best interest. Now, for us who are arriving at these positions of leverage, because I think a lot of us are, especially in our era right now, are at an age where we're, we're starting to master our crafts. We're starting mm -hmm. to get a lot of wins and experiences under our belt. And we're starting to know the ins and outs, the rights and wrongs, or just the, the rules of play as to 
how to have some of these really tough, uncomfortable conversations, more specifically around money, because that is a very uncomfortable thing to do, especially if you respect the person on the other end, or you admire them, or you look up to them, or they gave you your first opportunity or your first shot. And you're like, man, how ungrateful of, of me is it to, uh, to ask for more money? And what we're starting to see now are some examples of, hey, here's how to do this in a very tangible, realistic, like just real simple way. And it falls again on your responsibility to ask the question and initiate the dialogue because it's true from experience. I think you and I can both say this. It's never going to come to you. You have to start the dialogue. And, and if you're true and if you're, and if you're, you're deserving of it, or there's some level of agreement there, you're going to see that there isn't much pushback. It's like, we were just waiting for you. We almost know that it was just a matter of time before this conversation would come up. So I I like how she puts that out there and and is almost encouraging people to just see that it's normal. I I know a normalizing, there's a lot of memes that talk about, hey, normalize this or normalize that. Well, maybe we need to normalize asking for what our true value or what our true worth is, Mm -hmm. even when it comes to finances and pay, because it's not as like disrespectful as some of us believe it to be, especially if you do it in a, in a reasonable way, you have some wins and, and, and leverage on your end to right. stand and make that ask in a very respectful way. I think that, that we got to see that as more common to at least feel comfortable enough to step up to the plate and make the ask. Mm, yeah. The, and it's so, it's so hard to ask sometimes when you feel, and this, this the key word is feel, right? That like, yo, you should know. Yeah. Like, yo, how long do I got to be here for you to be like, oh, you know what? And, and mm, I'll talk a little transparent because this hits home for me. This hits home, mm-hmm. right? And if you don't, negotiate and they do finally come around and say yo you know what you're right we can we can never pay you what you're truly worth and then when they finally <laughs> do tell you what the raise is you're disrespected because it's like yeah because to be honest if you think about it if you're ever put in that position they're probably giving you what they should have given way earlier. Right? But because you never spoke up, whether from a nine to five situation, contracting situation, brand deals, whatever, right? If you never speak about it, then it's like they think they're doing right. They're like, yo, yeah. we gave you something. We thought about doing you. you a favor. Right. We're we thought about you. Look, other people wouldn't have never thought about you. We thought about you. And here you go. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I just, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But I thought you were going to bring up the, your favorite Jay-Z quote. I thought I thought you were gonna do. I I put I, it there because I, I thought I, you had the planes. Hat. I go, was like, it's my go to. It's my go to. That changed my life on 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 the whole ordeal. But yeah, man, if, uh, some of the OGs know. If y'all been listening to this, that that line changed uh, a, a good amount of my life. Not my whole life, but a good amount of it. Because I was like, oh, yeah, wow. You know. I really thought that. You know, that's how it works. But not those of you unfamiliar with it. I heard it from Ryan Leslie, actually. Uh, But I but I I, I know you were the one who's like, no, that actually came from Jay. But it's simply this. You don't get what you're worth. You get what you negotiate. Mm -hmm. And my Mm -hmm. goodness, did I just say, whoa, not to say that being a nice guy is is a bad thing or that you should stop being nice and kind. Is it worth or deserved? Is it worth or deserved? Uh, I think it's, I don't know, but in either case, either one of those is a, is a good Both line. of them are important. Yes. Both of, Both them, of them are them important. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's like, at the end of the day, it's, it's more important that you know 
that you have to negotiate both your worth and what you deserve. You're not just going to get that off the bat. It's, it's, it's your ability to negotiate that helps you to, uh, uh, to really land that. Listen, I, people go, whenever you're listening to this, the next day, renegotiate right now. Right now, renegotiate. Yo, let's talk about these, uh, these terms that you got, right? Look, it is deserve. It In is? business, okay. you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. Jay-Z, mm. decoded, right? Both, worth and deserve, both. But you definitely won't get what you're worth. That's a big oh, 100%. 100%. fact. Not even, like, deserve is more like based off the task that you've done and you, you know, you killed that. But you're worth, mm -hmm. you're definitely not going to get what you're worth. That's yeah, yeah, it's rare. It's rare. Very rare. That you are... You are, Crazy thing uh, is, though, some of us don't know it, though. That's the truth. And that's like a whole, almost a whole other conversation. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, sat, I sat down with the attorney and said, you know you're not getting what you're worth, right? Mm. Like, oh, mm. I didn't think about that. No, we knew that. I don't know what you're right. saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I don't know why you need to hear that from an outsider. That was... <laughs> right. Interesting. Yo, I'm just... I'm just saying this is uh, yeah, people. I, I wish I knew the article she was reading, especially the ladies that that the, the fact that it said about us, like we suck. We just mm. take the money. Right. <laughs> uh, we just like, hey, praise God for the opportunity. Thank you. Next year, y your value goes up with each with with each cycle. Right. Whether yeah. it's a, whether it's a year, whether it's, you know, it, Semester, whatever your cycle is, right? Your worth goes up. They still have you for a reason. Yeah. And we just never, we just assume. I sat there myself. I sat and assumed. And I actually came up with a reason why it didn't happen. I actually mm. came up with uh, a different strategy on how, you know what? You don't worry about it. I'll worry about it somewhere else. Thinking that was okay. And right. it's like, absolutely not. It's not okay. They still need to do right. You don't need to go extra to, to compensate what they, they don't give you. The lack. Yeah. Right. So it's like, oh, okay. All right. So uh, ladies, gents, uh, after this podcast that you are listening or watching, uh, please renegotiate all your contracts, your um, nine to five situations, salary, relationships, the whole nine. whatever, <laughs> just whatever. It doesn't matter. Shoot, if you have a uh, uh, something with your significant other. Renegotiate that. Listen, mm. Now, mm. I know you wanted you wanted me just to do the the trash every single day, right? right. I've been doing that for like four years. Come on now. Can we trade? For you. Can we, can you, can you yeah. get Tuesdays? Right. I don't Come even, on. I'll still take it. I just, <laughs> can I get a day off? Yeah. Can I, can I get, yeah. this is so can good. I, I love PTO, this. PTO, can I get some paid this. time off? <laughs> right, right. Can I get an optional two days a month that I can Talk about opt? it. Talk if about, I listen, day, I just I, saved somebody I right out? there. I just, I literally I, just saved somebody right there. Yo, I'm just letting you know. That's good. That somebody's going to be like, I might use hey, that. Yo, hey, I'm babe. Gonna imagine. Hey, babe. Like, <laughs> Mid podcast. I, we got to, yeah. uh, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. But look, um, man, that was so good. And once again, all this is powered by Ecamm Live. And if you want to sign up for Ecamm Live, we got a 14 day trial for you. Uh, NikkiandMoose.com slash Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M, -M, okay? That's how it's all done. Um, follow us everywhere, uh, at Nikki and Moose. Please and thank you. And Moose, final words. We're at the final words already? Already. Okay, hold up. I actually got an important one uh, <laughs> that I wrote in my notes. I'm sorry, that caught me off guard. I don't know why I was expecting one more. He uh, was like. One we, more situation, but. No. No, no, no. Let me. We're let me, like no, 59 I, minutes in. Okay, that time went by really fast. I'm not going to lie. But I wrote something down that, that was really important, and I was actually going to. I had it in mind to, to prep. Uh, Just like how LeBron. Like the preps. listeners. <laughs> 
all the way, all the way, all the way. Uh, no, so, so, so he, 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 here's what I'll say, right? And okay. forgive me, I won't be looking on the screen because I want to read it word for word, right? That's fine. It's more important to do the right thing and not just say the right thing, right? Mm. What you don't realize is saying and not doing throws off your psychology. It's actually fraud. So don't just say the right thing, but do the right thing. 